So this is Unit 1, Video 4, which is all about photoelectron spectroscopy, or PES. So we talked about electron configurations in the last video, and electron configurations seem very abstract. It's very hard for us to understand how we have evidence for these electron configurations. Well, now we actually have this evidence to prove that electron configurations are true. And this evidence is what is called spectroscopy. And spectroscopy is the method of analyzing matter using different types of electromagnetic radiation. And what we're going to focus on is photoelectron spectroscopy. So that's how we get the PES, photoelectron spectroscopy. And this is not covered in your book. This is something new that the AP Chemistry curriculum is now going to cover just because it is now a way to prove the abstract concept of electron configurations. And so this is a picture of what the photoelectron spectroscopy apparatus looks like. It's very complex, and we're not going to really focus on how this is used. We're going to focus more on the data that is produced from this apparatus. So just to briefly cover how it works, just so you know and how you understand, first, a sample is exposed to electromagnetic radiation. So the sample is probably going to be a specific element. So typically it will be in the gaseous form. So the sample is exposed to electromagnetic radiation, and then electrons jump out of the sample, and they go through this energy analyzer. So they either go on the negative side or the positive side, and then they go through this analyzer. Well, the kinetic energy is measured. The kinetic energy of the electron that is kicked out Okay, that's what is measured. And the way that it's measured is the energy to remove the electron, which is the ionization energy, is equal to the energy that's added minus the motion or the energy of the electron. So the energy required to remove the electron is the energy added minus the energy of the electron. And this energy to remove an electron, this ionization energy, is plotted on a graph. So the PES data is what we're going to focus on the most. This data is like a chart or like a graph that we're going to look at, and we can actually determine the, electro, the electron configuration for an element. So something to focus on first is that the energy that is required to remove an electron, okay, which is the ionization energy, increases as we go to the left. So if you notice here, your x-axis is energy. This all the way on the left is higher than on the right. So the energy required to remove an electron increases as we actually move to the left. And that's because these electrons that are all the way over on the left are the ones that are closest to the nucleus. So the closer the electrons are to the nucleus, the more energy it takes to remove it. Right, because all of your protons are very attracted to the electrons, and so the closer it is to the nucleus, the harder it is to remove. So as you go from left to right, these left peaks are closest to the nucleus. These right peaks are farther from the nucleus, and that's because it takes more energy to remove them from closer to the nucleus, less energy the further they become. So each peak actually represents the electrons in a single sublevel in an atom. And this is where we start to look for the electron configuration. So in a single sublevel, that means S, P, D, and F. And then the bigger the peak, the more the electrons. So this first peak has more electrons than the second peak. And if you notice, this first peak is about twice as tall as this second peak. So this first peak will have twice as many electrons. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at hydrogen versus helium. So this plot on the left shows hydrogen, this plot on the right shows helium, and we're just going to compare the two. So if we look, we have increasing energy going from right to left. So most energy is over here on the left, 
on both peaks. It's important to look at that x-axis just to determine where you are. Remember, the more energy, the closer to the nucleus. So if we take a look, this shows us a smaller peak compared to helium. If we think about the electron configuration, hydrogen is 1s1, right? So 1s1 versus helium, which is 1s2, right? Because hydrogen has one electron, helium has two. So this peak actually represents these electron configurations. Hydrogen has one peak, helium has one peak. That's because both of these are in the S, the 1S sublevel. But hydrogen is half as tall as helium, and that is because helium has twice as many electrons as hydrogen. So again, the helium peak is twice as tall because there are twice as many electrons in the 1S sublevel. If we continue to look at hydrogen versus helium, you might notice that helium is actually a little bit further to the left meaning that it has higher energy. So more energy is needed to remove the 1s electrons in helium because if you think about it, we have 1s1 versus 1s2. 1s2 is actually higher um, or is a more stable sublevel. It has the more, more stable energy because the electrons in helium are held more tightly. They're held more tightly because helium also has an added proton, which means there is what is called a higher effective nuclear charge. We're going to talk more about effective nuclear charge when we look at periodic trends, but the effective nuclear charge is essentially the positive charge that is experienced by the valence electrons. And so the more protons you have, the higher the nuclear charge. So helium has two protons pulling on the 1s, but hydrogen only has one. And that is why helium takes more energy, or it takes more energy to remove the electrons from helium than hydrogen. So if we take a look at oxygen, we know the electron configuration of oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So if we take a look at this PES data, Notice, all the way to the left is the highest energy. This is the closest to the nucleus. Okay, so closest to the nucleus is 1s. And that never changes. No matter what element you're looking at, the 1s is always closest to the nucleus. We always fill the orbitals lowest energy to highest. So we go 1s, then 2s. Then we have 2p. Now if we didn't know what this was, we could still determine the electron configuration because 1s can have two electrons. All right, so we can have two electrons in the 1s. We cannot have any more, and if we have more orbitals filled, that means that we can't have any less than two. So we have two electrons in the 1s, we have two electrons in the 2s because it's the same height, and we filled another orbital, another sublevel, but now we want to take a look at this 2p peak. What is the relative size of this 2p peak versus this 2s? Well, this 2p peak is about twice as tall. So if 2s has two electrons, this 2p should have four electrons. Again, that's because this peak is twice as tall as the 2s. So essentially this PES data is essentially reading a graph. We're reading a graph and we're interpreting this data from this graph. So we can look at scandium. Now scandium has more peaks than what we looked at with hydrogen, helium, or oxygen. So if we go through, okay, highest energies to the left, that means this is 1s. Because we have more peaks, that means we've filled more sublevels, which means this 1s is filled. So we have two electrons in the 1s. We have two electrons in the 2s, again, because we have to go all the way up to this furthest peak. So we have two electrons in the 2s, six in the 2p. So if we kind of take a look at the scale of this, if you notice, each line is actually one electron. 
because this goes from first to second line. This is two electrons. So we have six electrons in the 2p. Then we can move even further, two electrons in the 3s. Then six in the 3p. And then notice these last two peaks. We only have one electron, but then we have two in the 4s. Okay, that's because we have to fill the 4s first and then the 3d. So notice that it takes more energy to remove an electron from this 3d peak than from the 4s. This is because the electrons that are added to the 3d actually shield the 4s. We're going to talk more about shielding later, but what this means is that it takes less energy to remove these 4s electrons than it actually does to remove the 3d electrons. And so it's because of this that makes metals positive ions. It's these s electrons that are lost first. So if we have a metal ion, specifically a transition metal ion, we're actually going to pull out of the s before we pull out of the D sublevel. Now, this was the lecture on PES. We're going to do some examples in class. We'll go through um, three examples, and then you'll work with your groups further um, to really understand this because this is completely new. But if you want to hear someone else talk about photoelectron spectroscopy, you can actually go to this YouTube link. And this YouTube link will actually take you uh, to a professor from MIT speaking on photoelectron spectroscopy. So if you are interested, you can watch someone else talk about PES. Or really, if you need more practice, I would recommend going um, to this link to watch about photoelectron spectroscopy. So please make sure that you complete the WISC form. So you will summarize uh, PES data, why it's important, and then ask any questions that you have because I know that there are some questions related to PES data. So if you have questions, please make sure that you ask using that WISC form.